there's a big problem with VO2 max studies that we don't talk about enough. And if you ignore this problem, you might stall your endurance progress regardless of what level you're at or what sport you practice. And yes, I'm the first to say it, high intensity training helps increase your VO2 max. But if that's the only thing you take away from those VO2 max studies, you're only seeing a small part of the story. So let's see what's really going on. First and foremost, VO2 max is important. And it's one of those physiological metrics that is at the intersection between health and performance. Meaning that if you have a high VO2 max, your all cause mortality risk goes down. If you have a high VO2 max, you have a bigger potential for athletic development and in endurance sports, it's not going to help you win the Tour de France, but you need a high VO2 max if you want a chance to rival with the best in your endurance discipline. And VO2 max is the amount of oxygen that your body can consume maximally. Obviously, this is going to change depending on what modality you're trying to express that VO2 max in, meaning that if you're on a bike, if you're running, if you're on an arm crank, you're not going to express the same VO2 max because you're not recruiting the same amount of muscle mass and the oxygen uh, utilization and delivery kinetics are different but all in all we usually consider vo2 max to be the size of your engine and this is going to be an important factor if you're trying to develop your performance and especially your endurance and again like i said at the beginning high intensity training is a potent way to increase your vo2 max and studies show that really well high intensity training helps develop your vo2 max some studies even go as far as saying that very high intensity training or sprint interval training is even more efficient and will increase your VO2 max even more than high intensity training. And a lot of people like pointing out the studies where they compare high intensity to low intensity or even very high intensity to low intensity training to kind of downplay the role and the importance and the place that low intensity training must take in global training or endurance training because high intensity has been shown to be more efficient to develop VO2 max than low intensity training. Sprint interval training has been shown to better increase your VO2 max compared to low intensity training. So this is all well and good, but there's a couple of factors that we don't talk about in those studies and that need to be part of the conversation if we want to have the best long-term development in our VO2 max and our athletic potential. One of those parameters is recovery. And what I mean by recovery is how much does this session actually actually cost you? What is the recovery cost of a given training session? And once we start including that parameter in the conversation, well, a low intensity training session is going to tax you very, very little. It's barely going to impart any fatigue on you. Obviously, if you do a very long ride or a very long run, that's a different conversation. But if we talk about an hour of, say, zone two training, it's not going to have any meaningful impact on your recovery. And 24 hours later, the next day, you'll be able to just resume any type of training and be at your full potential. But that's not the same if we talk about high intensity training and even less if we talk about sprint interval training. Now, if you've never done sprint interval training, here's uh, how you can do it if you want to give it a try. Uh, so you sit on a bike, for example, that's the best way to do it, especially at the start. And you're going to find whichever resistance allows you to express about 120 RPMs when you're peaking on your power output after about six to eight seconds of all out effort. And so you're going to set that resistance and then you're going to start and you're going to sprint as hard as you can on that bike. And like I said, around six to eight seconds, you're going to reach your maximum wattage. And then from that point on, you're gonna to start to fatigue. So even if you keep pushing as hard as you can, your water is gonna go down, 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 and your legs are gonna burn, 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 burn. And you're gonna to wanna to stop and it's gonna be very, very painful. And you do that for 30 seconds and then you rest for three to four minutes. And then you do that three to four times. And here's a sprint interval training session for you. So yes, those sessions are very potent and help increase VO2 max quite quickly in the first few weeks of this type of intervention. But it's a very, very hard session to do do, which doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. It just means you have to consider the cost that it imparts on your recovery. And you have to take that parameter into consideration, whether it's low, high, or very high intensity training. 
High intensity is the same. A high intensity session works well to improve your view to max, but it is also going to uh, generate quite a bit of fatigue and you're going to need 48 to 72 hours to recover fully from a really hard VO2 max session. Another aspect that is usually neglected when we talk about improving VO2 max is the duration of the intervention or how long it's going to take to see uh, the different types of progress that we want to see in terms of VO2 max improvements. And I'm going to share uh, this graph on the screen with you here from this recent study that shows the uh, speed of development of uh, VO2 max from different types of training. You have endurance training, high intensity training, and sprint interval training. And you can see at the two week mark that obviously sprint interval training is way up on the other uh, types of training. So this intervention helps increase your VO2 max very quickly in time. But if we extend the timeline over weeks, maybe even dozens of weeks, and if we want to take training seriously over months and even years, well, we see that uh, it starts to taper off pretty quickly for sprint interval training. High intensity training also tends to taper off after a number of weeks and uh, endurance training just seeps to keep going up. And that's not that surprising because we know that VO2 max, your maximum consumption of oxygen, is tightly linked to cardiac output, how much blood your heart can push uh, in a given uh, time frame. And that is not increased very quickly over time. If you want a bigger heart that can pump a lot of blood, it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of years, a lot of training to get there. And the best way to accumulate a lot of training at a very low cost is to do low intensity training. So we have to take the duration of the intervention and we have to take the recovery cost into account when we talk about different types of training and different ways to increase our VO2 max. And again, VO2 max high intensity training is very interesting, especially when you're a beginner, because you're going to get fast improvements, fast gains, and you're going to see progress and it's going to keep you motivated and it's going to keep you improving over time, but only up until a certain point there becomes a time where high intensity might actually turn on you and become the thing that prevents you from improving further. And I see that a lot with CrossFitters. You start CrossFit, you haven't been very active for the past few years. You see really good, uh, strong improvements in your physical capacity and your VO2 max over the first two to three years, but you keep just pushing, pushing, pushing that high intensity. And at some point that actually becomes detrimental because you don't have the recovery capacity to tolerate that amount of high intensity. And obviously you've developed that engine over the last two or three years, but you haven't developed the chassis of your car. And now your tiny little chassis can't hold the big engine that you've developed. And you start to uh, have some issues holding that car onto the road. And uh, once you have a big turn coming up, uh, a lot of people get off the road, unfortunately, because of this. So the message here is that high intensity training is great. It's important. It works, but it is not the only thing that works and it shouldn't be the only thing that we do. So we should find a balance between the different types of intensities, low, medium, high, very high intensity. And we should explore all those types of intensities throughout our training year. And we obviously have to organize those intelligently in different training blocks based on our profile, based on the sport that we practice and the demands of the sport, based on when our competition is and which phase of training we find ourselves in. Uh, but you have to explore all those different intensities and they all work together. The low intensity is going to improve your VO2 max, but it's also going to give you the coins that you're going to be spending on your high and very high intensity sessions. So kind of gain the coins with the low intensity and then spend them with the high intensity. That's how you need to think about it. And all those types of training work together. So we shouldn't stay fixated on one type of training because such and such study said so. We need to take a nice broad view of endurance training and apply those different intensities based on the needs of each individual and at the right time of the year. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope you appreciate it. I look forward to reading your comments below uh, and I'll see you in the next video.